the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass ended several months ago now, and while it was one of the biggest forms of DLC any Nintendo game has gotten, it wasn't perfect, as a lot of the tracks the Mario Kart community were patiently waiting for never made it in. One of those tracks, and my personal favorite, was DS Escher Fortress. This left the Mario Kart community in shock at the realization of this news, but instead of grieving at the loss of the track not making it into Mario Kart 8, I decided to recreate my favorite Mario Kart DS track in my favorite game, Mario Maker 2, and do what the Booster Course Pass couldn't. So here's the story of how I recreated DS Airship Fortress in Mario Maker 2. So here's the deal guys, making this level ended up taking me way less time than what I originally thought. As in, it took me only one stream to make. For comparison, my Super Mario World boss fight levels took 5 in total. So because of that, this video is going to be formatted a little differently. First, I'll talk about the important sections of the level, as a lot of elements I used here I got from my Bowser's Castle 3 track recreation. Next, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of my version and the Mario Kart 7 one. And finally, I'll talk about the flaws or issues within the level that you all might have solutions to. In that case, feel free to leave them in the comments, and if I like them, I'll make changes to the level. But with that said, let's get into the level layout. Starting off with the beginning area, I put a Koopa Troopa car along with a mushroom that you could choose to get. A little further ahead, there's a gate that prevents the player from going further. When the level starts, the car is immediately made vacant using this block and bomb setup, allowing you to enter the car with ease. And while that's happening, above the level, a mechanism that will allow the gate to open up is actively working, which takes about 6 seconds to happen. It's pretty clear that not much has changed between this section of the level and my previous one, other than the on off switch mechanism being different. So let's continue on, because there's a lot more to talk about. Now in the track, you start by falling into the lower level of the floor and being bombarded by bonsai bills. So I made a platform down below and put 4 bonsai bills across it, two of which you had to jump over to represent how you needed to dodge them. After getting past that, you come across your first left turn of the track. Now I've explained this before, but for those who don't know, the way I try to recreate turns in Mario Kart tracks is having the car switch directions, but also have it rise or fall depending on which one happens in the actual track. If you want more details on why I chose to do it this way, then I recommend watching my Bowser's Castle 3 recreation video. But anyway, my point is, I didn't use that setup, at least not for this turn. Instead, what I wanted was to create a setup that had the platforms rise when you drove over them. To do that, I used an exclamation block that would activate once the player got close enough to activate this stomp and on off setup. What that did is have this bullet belt launcher on a conveyor crush the bomb adjacent to it, causing it to explode and triggering the exclamation block. And because it extended up by two blocks, you needed to jump so you wouldn't crash. Also, by having you jump, I could further mimic the sensation of going up in the track. Now, after that, I remained fairly consistent in terms of how the turns were designed. There was this one part where you drove on one of the ships of the track and these rocky wrenches will try to block your path, so I used skip scripts instead of those as they were the most similar functioning enemies I could find. The next part I want to talk about is the section of the track where you go into the ship. Here, you'll find crates that you need to drive around, which I just used literal crates for. The real problem was what came after that. These two burners moving back and forth. Obviously, the 3D World game style doesn't have burners, or anything close to that. So I really had to get creative for what I had to use in place of them. I ended up using two piranha creepers and put one of them on the ceiling and the other right on top of this exclamation block. Both of them extended by 4 blocks in length, with the only difference being that one went down while the other went up. Now, I did come across an issue where the creeper that went down would always get in my way because it went down so fast, which I honestly hated. Like, I'm just casually going through the level with a clean run and everything and then all of a sudden, boom, lose all your speed and go backwards like 3 blocks. Fortunately, I was able to come up with a solution to this, and even though it was originally meant to fix this section, it actually added a whole other layer to the level that never even crossed my mind. I can't mention what it is just now, but you'll know soon enough. Anyway, after the first creeper, you needed to jump over the second one, which I made more obvious by adding a diagonal coin trail, and that's how I recreated the burner section of the track. After that, you're taken into a cannon launcher that shoots you directly in this tower, which is probably one of the coolest sections of the track. So I'm sorry to say that I just used the warp box to transport you. I really couldn't think of anything else, so I just resorted to using warp boxes. Now, once entering the tower, you'll realize that its cylinder shape forces you to hold your drift as you go down. At first, I wasn't really sure how to recreate this section. I mean, this isn't Super Mario Maker 3D. But then I asked myself something. What does the tower make you do? Drift? And what's drifting? A form of turning? And how do I recreate the idea of turning in Mario Kart games? 
So yeah, once you go through the warp box, you have to go down multiple steep slopes with a spring at the top of each. I made you do this four times, which was meant to represent the player building up an ultra mini turbo that would manifest itself through this two times speed conveyor belt leading into the final jump before the goal. I had this jump here despite it being nowhere in the original track, because if Nintendo had made this track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, there's a good chance that they would add a ramp right here to cut this turn, especially considering how the track doesn't have any shortcuts. This is where the level itself ended, but I wasn't done just yet. After finishing the layout of the level, I ended up adding some more elements to make it feel more like an authentic Mario Kart race. And this is where we can go back to when I mentioned coming up with a solution that added another layer to the track. The cannon box, an item that allows the player to shoot cannons at any point. But what made this item so good is how well it functions with the Koopa Troopa car. By driving the car while also having the mask on, you can essentially become a tank. Because while the car can kill almost everything in its path, it can't destroy everything. And that's where the cannon box can make up for that. See, now when you arrive at this section with the Piranha Creeper, instead of just running into it, you could preemptively shoot a cannon and kill it allowing you to charge forward. The cannon box was essentially you pulling an item from a question box. And once I realized this, I started to apply that same concept in other areas of the level. Like in this area right here where instead of just driving through, you now need to shoot a cannon to destroy the boxes blocking your path. It even made the concept of killing Koopas as a form of passing players even more fun. I put four of them throughout the level, meaning you started the race in fifth place and had to make your way all the way to first. This honestly made the whole thing five times more fun to play through, but after that, there wasn't much left to the level. I added a Mario Kart DS sign over here and put a trophy at the end of the level, along with some clouds in certain areas to really sell that airship feeling. But with all of those added, the track was finished. So like I mentioned earlier, let's see a side by side comparison of the Mario Kart version and my own. So what'd you guys think? Personally, I think it turned out pretty well, but the level wasn't without its flaws, so let's talk about those really quick. The first problem was the on-off mechanism that opened the gate. While it worked fine, the problem with it is that it didn't give any prior warning to let the player know that the gate was about to open. And while the lava bubble setup did do this by being able to hear the bomb when it's about to blow up, the combination of the lava bubble having to travel to the bomb and then having to blow it up just took too long and could easily become an annoyance after a couple of attempts. Unfortunately, this was a setup I couldn't come up with a solution for. Next was the exclamation block setup. While the way it worked was pretty cool, it wasn't sight read friendly at all. I mean, unless you're watching this video right now, chances are you'll get to this part, run into the block, and question what was supposed to happen. I tried my best by adding a couple arrows that would make it a little more obvious, but I seriously doubt that'll be enough. Now these next two things aren't really flaws with the level, but more so ways to make improvements. The first one was with the glider section. As I mentioned earlier, I ended up using warp boxes to represent the glider section. But if I had a way to actually recreate that section, that would be even better. And the second thing was the spiraling tower. While it wasn't terrible, it definitely felt like the least fun part of the track. So having an alternative that made for a better ending would be great. So if you have some ideas for any of these, leave them in the comments below and I'll check them out. But yeah, that's the story of how I recreated DS Airship Fortress in Mario Maker 2. But you know what's also something that I really like that I recreated in Mario Maker 2? The Super Mario Wonder Bowser and Bowser Jr. boss fights. Since most people don't seem to like those fights, I decided to recreate them in Mario Maker and prove their worth. So if you want to check out how those levels turned out, click the video on screen. But anyway, until next time, bye!